Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial coverage of the LJL 2020 Summer Split. Round 2 playoffs, match number 1, game number 4 is upon us gentlemen for V3 Esports facing off against Sengoku Gaming. And we've had an interesting series so far to get us to a 2-1 V3 advantage. V3 now have match point favor, and where do you, how do you think we really got here? How do we think Sengoku are now behind? Nymera, you thought they might even be in this spot themselves, mm -hmm. alternatively, and yeah, V3 um, are um, finding the comps, finding the wins. I think that v so V3 uh, came in very prepared in game one, very, very impressed by them. I do think that game one of a series like this is very important when you do have two very tightly matched teams, and it puts the emphasis on the other team to adapt, and in fairness mm. to them, Sengoku in game two, did adapt and they ended up pulling out the win there. True. Game three, it showed to me a lot of the stylistic differences between V3 and Sengoku in terms of how Sengoku love to play towards lane. V3 are much more committed to helping out Boogie and when Boogie and Blank play mm. in quite similar fashion and one of them has a better structure and support network for their style of play and they have a champion pool which can carry their team through into the mid and late game, that can lead to these huge differences and in that last game, V3 did not look like they were going to lose anytime soon. They didn't, I mean... For Boogie's so side, he did the most damage in the game that get, that time round as well. Mm. Like, like he's looked pretty good on that champion, honestly. Yeah, I mean, just having a look at that damage dealt to champions on screen right now, it's genuinely phenomenal to see the amount of damage that this pick is doing on him. And he, this is three in a row from Boogie. He's picked mm. this three times, but over on the other side, Pyrian has picked this uh, Azir three times. It's interesting that these two players have indexed twice on these champions. If you look on the official stream as well, you can see some uh, pretty telling jungle proximity stats. Blank has spent very little time around his lanes. Boogie has spent about, well, a lot of time around his lanes. That's looking like over half the game around his lanes in one way or another, right. which is yeah. pretty telling. He spent three times the amount of time uh, near his lanes than, than uh, Blank has done, based off of those stats. I mean, this That's is... Huge. I mean, this, these are stats from the last game, and I, and this is up to 15 minutes, and it's not surprising. Boogie was everywhere, and Blank was put very far behind very early on. Wouldn't you agree? Well, remember that first invade was pretty good. He invaded into the top side. That was basically the end of it, though, because like, it started mm. off being, oh, maybe this is going to be a really fun jungle matchup to watch. And then the two scuttle fights happened, and then you realize, okay, right, Blank's in a pretty bad position now. It doesn't have Flash, has already died, lost his buffs, and gave them over to the Renekton, which will tide him through that early laning phase. Yep. Um, yeah, I think that Boogie played very well in respect to his lanes and wh wh whether they wanted to or could roam. And Blank, unfortunately, was a bit boneheaded about it and uh, committed to a lot of things he really couldn't survive. Yeah, and then I remember that's not just Boogie going to those lanes, it's those lanes going to Boogie, which is part of that deal as well. And we kind of mentioned it in the post game, right? They teamed up really well in those early skirmishes. So, we've now seen three games from these teams. We've seen some traits come through repeatedly from these two teams. Gentlemen, how are we expecting game four? Is this where the sum of the spice comes out? Dragons are still important for both these teams. Dragon number four. Where are we expecting this game to go? Are we going to see Sengoku with side selection this time play on blue side? Lots of questions over mm. to you. How do you want to answer them? I think that I'd like to see something which isn't Azir on Pyrian now. I think that um, if he was building a little better, maybe going towards Lethal Tempo and the other stuff. Okay, I don't want to hammer on that too much, but I do think that the Azir has been lower <laughs> impact than Sengoku need him to be. Sure. Given yeah. the fact that I do think Pyrian has been the better mid laner in terms of his laning stats and stuff like that early. Nimbus sure. Ace has found Champion Pool, which is working for his team in this series, and that's more important than just raw laning stats. Ace has 100%. been more impactful in a lot of the early games, and the early games has been what has been the flavor of most of these games so far. Maybe we see a Zoe let through, maybe we see a LeBlanc mm -hmm. let through, something like that, because this Azir is not doing enough to back up his jungler early i'll also say i think perhaps getting boogie off this lilia might be something as well just try and force a different mm. matchup it does have so many junglers though i'm a bit worried about yeah, well that. exactly or, 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 or honestly just changing the focus put Apperman on something that's less lane 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 focused and look to try and focus bot side perhaps you know because v3 have been finding a lot of advantages there maybe just try and change the gameplay a bit well, gentlemen, we'll have to see what they do as pick and ban phase is upon us. So, gentlemen, take it away. I'll take it away. And for the first time this series, Sengoku Gaming will find themselves on B. 
blue side. That will be an interesting change in draft priority for sure. We'll see what V3 ban away. They've gone towards the TF and the Zoe. Caitlyn ban on Sengoku's side, though, even though they're on blue side, suggests mm. they've got a very distinct first pick in mind. Maybe. Could also be picking the Lilia for themselves. I don't imagine. Well, Blank being a champion, being not champion, a player, which has been so famed for his jungle pathing. And Lilia is a champion with such a clear, fast clear speed. I can definitely see that being a pick which uh, could fit into Blank's wheelhouse. They're banning it instead, though. Are they going to first pick in something like a set? The Volley Bear is still available, too. One of those two will get through draft. Beta will have to choose very carefully what they want to take off the table. Well, you could leave both up and look to trade them as the other option here as well. Yes, I mean, both Bard is still available, yeah, too. Bard is to take up. that away. I know mm -hmm. NT didn't have the best game on that last game, but he is still a very good player off that pick. Definitely an option. Uh, see what V3 want to ban last here. Could look to continue to focus at, uh, sorry, Pyrian's champion pool, and they will go to the Orianna again. Just keep Pyrian onto something like the Azir, which is a known quantity and has been, honestly, thus far, a little okay, lackluster in the early to mid. So, um, set first pick is flexed between two, three rolls, as we said. It, it kind of goes all over the shop, even though it's not as powerful in the solo lanes anymore. Ace did pull that out. He also pulled out the nerfed Karma, too. And it doesn't matter that they've been nerfed. He's just using them for their base utility, not necessarily playing them for their damage limits. Paz looking to lock in the Renekton. We talked about maybe getting Appen on something less lane-focused. You kind of force the issue with something like the Renekton, though, because he is so good in lane. Boogie once again hovering his Evelyn, <laughs> and one day it won't be just Renekton a hover, Nidalee. I promise Nidalee. you, but it will be Renekton Nidalee. It's a great combo. Renekton sets up the stun, easy spear I, land, you dive really hard. I would really like to see a Mordekaiser out of FMN finally. I think that's one of the better picks into the Renekton Nidalee. Post 6, you just ult someone and you turn that 2v2, 2v1 combo into a straight 1v1, which you have a decent shot of winning. And of course, if they are thinking about leaving Appermen to weak side, perhaps, then the Mordekaiser that really plays into the way Appermen plays. Okay. They are going to go towards the Azir. It is a safe blind pick. It does scale up very well. I just think that Sengoku have not been able to survive through to the point in the game, whereas it is so dominant at this point. Obviously, game two happened. That, yeah. that, was, that was pretty cool. And game three, we saw in the late game period doing some nice work, and his laning phase has been good. I'm just wondering if there's another pick which can leverage its, le leverage its advantages earlier into the game and alleviate some of the pressure bot lane. Of course, V3 having the lead down there all three games so far. Ash locked in again for Yutori Mayashi. It will be, and that means... Probably we won't see the Callista pick up for Archer because Ash just is yeah. a very good pick Sounds into that. Enough. And it will be the Senna instead, which is honestly another one of those picks that's been rising very highly in mm -hmm. priority. And Archer has gone towards that, particularly in Spring Split. Yeah, so Senna has that extra global. If you're going to start diving top lane, that is something you need to factor in Renekton Nidalee. With a Senna roll over the top of it, again, that extra amount of damage coming through can change your damage calculations in that uh, 1vx scenario for Appermen particularly. Volley Bear now bound away for V3. Another one of those picks we said was probably mm. less likely to get through pick and ban. I'm actually curious what V3 go towards here. Do they want to pick something else to follow up with the Santa Global? Uh, maybe the Tom Kench, I imagine. Well, I, I mean, Sangoku, I think they should ban away Nautilus and Tom Kench, if I'm mm. honest. Unless you want to ban away maybe one of Ace's mid lane champions. But I think sure. the Tom Kench is a good place to start. Reiner has been traditionally very good on that pick. Although the last time V3 played against Sangoku, they did play that Time Catch bot lane, and uh, Reiner went something like 0 and 5. It was a really, really poor game from him. It wasn't fantastic. I mean, in spring, he had some very good devours on the champion. Yeah. yeah, he had a very good spring spell. And so, you know, we know historically this guy's been pretty damn good on the champion. Hell, it wasn't even that long ago to call it historically. So. Room for that to come back out and send a time catch as only. I believe in Spring Split, Rhino was 5 0 on both Nautilus and Tom Kench. Damn. His thrash was also very impressive. You didn't quite have the same win rate on that, though. And yet, it is taken away so far that Nautilus, the Tom Kench, is still available. Do they really fear anything from Ace? Do they think that they can just leave that champion pool open? Or are they still worried about that TV2? Because they V3 have indexed into that a lot so far. Could see something like a Leona as well here true, that's been true, raising true. a priority. There you go. Man, I'm proud of you. I didn't well, think about that. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I'm, well, that nice. does, however, leave the Tom Kench yeah. up, which we've kind of been but talking the, about. It's I, the famous pairing I, with Senna. So I do think that Tom Kench is kind of met into the ash, right? In terms of himself, because you go for the blade and you get the range of focus. And you feel sad. If you step up too far and you get, like, Thresh Oak, for instance. I mean, Thresh would be a decent currency mm -hmm. in this comp. Um, sure. Because the lantern is nice, uh, then you can you can definitely deal with that. Looks like Ace's LeBlanc is going to come out again. I do want to touch again on Leona because Leona is very good into the Ash. It takes that um, pick potential away from Ryan onto the AD carry of Sengoku. But now you have more pick potential in the mid lane from Ace. 
Well, last time a Leblanc came out, kind so of hit okay. this point where, Sorry. like, it was fine enough, but, like, hit this point where, like, the opposing Nah was just unkillable. So too hard. much, too much resist. Couldn't do all that much. Could ace in the side lane. Might well be thinking about a Graves pick. Oh, uh, worth noting, a lot of the pauses which are happening on our stream are actually coming from the main stream. They are. Uh, so, we're, yeah, us. So don't, don't flame us. Well, I mean, you can fl flame, flame us for other reasons. Yeah. Don't flame, flame us for, us for correct that. reasons. It's not yeah. us, we promise. Um, Ooh, okay. Okay, so, way to respond to the global would be the lock in of the GP, which would move that set down to support, which we've always said was a possibility. Is a pretty good anti dive champion if you can play it correctly as GP. It is. Okay. I'm not going to wait until it's locked in because I did think is. that the Mordekaiser was the other option. The GP would have been interesting in its own way. There have been different things to talk about. I mentioned Mordekaiser right at the start of the draft as soon as they locked in the Renekton mid lane. You can turn that 1v2 into a 1v1. You are decent versus the Renekton in the 1v1. It depends how you build, whether you're going to go for the uh, Haunting Guys and Tabby Bramble vest, stuff like that. So you can just be very survival versus the Renekton. Or are you going to go for something like the Proto Belt and the Leandries to try and take down these uh, more um, f slippery carries in the Nidley, the, uh, the least, not least, in, the LeBlanc, the other L <laughs> champion, and the center? Just allows you to gap close a bit more with that Proto Belt. Sure. I can see that option there. And it's also a pretty good into the kind of cool the V3 are running here, which is. A lot of mobility with the LeBlanc, the Bard, the Nidalee. Looked to set up plays, had Senna and Renekton on top of it to try and blow up single targets and get the early mid-game playmaking going on. Okay, and worth noting, I believe this is Reiner's first Bard game. I think it's his first pro-ray bar game. Interesting. I remember we were talking about that in our um, in our production, not production, like our pre, uh, like in some of our narrative, being saying like, oh, Reiner, this guy's been uh, uh, the best Japanese support. Like, let's be honest, this guy has been, he Very was nice. in contention with Boogie for the mid-split MVP. Really, really good player. But he's never been much of a LJL bar play. We've seen him played in solo queue. We were waiting to see whether there'd be a chance for him to pull that out. It's now locked inside alongside that center. Maybe not the best combo. And it is up against that set support. You can get CC'd very heavily. I'm looking to see what Reiner can do with the playmaking potential because he is a playmaking player. So you can sort of see whether Cosmic Binding into Curse of the... Or Last Embrace, rather, would be the mm -hmm. CC ability. Well, honestly, it's probably easier for the center to land that, yeah, think about it. Longer range. Push. So you try and combo that up and get as much damage down as you can. I can see how that mm -hmm. works out. Of course, you are still into an Ash, who's a pretty good laner at the moment. Very impressive with the volley. Set as well versus two squishy people could be a bit of a risk. Sengoku Gaming with a pretty good 4 1 or hell, a decent 5v5 as well with the double DPS and the, the Mordekaiser standing in front. On the side though, Sengoku uh, V3 looking to try and get some stuff done, done in those early skirmishes. They are. I am much more of a fan of what Sengoku have got to play with this time around. I like I, I said, agree. I've been really clamoring for Atman to play this champion. It's much more consistent than something like a Nar, where you have to play around the Mega Nar bar. And we saw that last game really didn't work out that so mm. well. Much more survival in those multi-man dives onto top lane. What this does mean is that if E3 do go bot lane, then of course Mordekaiser is better to be on the... Mordekaiser is probably better on weak side than on top uh, strong side. We saw it in DFM Burning Core, right? Yes. Very far keep playing against that kind of combo. A couple of games worked out very well. A couple of games it was a little bit more tenuous. You can set him behind, but in, in his team fight, as long as he does get to his correct itemization for what he wants to achieve in that team fight, because there are multiple ways he can build which will favor him death realming various different targets, then he will be very effective in this game. Yeah. This is also a Renekton Nidalee comp. Yep. This means that first 10 minutes are pretty critical for V3. They need to get that top side of the map rolling oh. if they want to play towards this particular kind of composition. You do have chains in mid lane. You do have various forms of CC in bot lane. This is the first time we've had real multiple sure. lanes which Nidalee can index towards. We're next to being that one combo. And as soon as that locked in first red one, red two, I'm like, okay, yeah, this could be a bit of an issue. And that's why you think of GP and Mordecai. So mm. two people that do have ways out of it. Orn is the other one, although... It's probably, even then, because you can ignore the Renekton stump with a W if he times it right. It's still very dangerous in that way. Whereas GP and Mordekaiser are slightly more survival and harder to dive in that kind of case. Either way, um, we do have ourselves that Azir LeBlanc matchup in the mid lane again. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this game, if you do want to go towards that, Linden's Comet, there are more squishy targets for that poke to actually mean more stuff again. So if Piran's going to go for it, it'll be more effective this game, even yeah. though I do hate it with a passion. Yeah, uh, you are not alone, of course. There are the memes around from Nemesis way back when he was talking about it. And... Uh... Lost to Shopkeeper is the, is the current meme coming out of the LCK. And let's see whether... Are you winning, Boris? <laughs> Are you winning, Boris? Is, is the real question. And thus far, he has been uh, potentially getting an edge over on Pyrian. That said, we 
think both of us here favoring what Sengoku Gaming have got if they can but, get to the mid game and V3 thing, right? haven't got themselves ahead, which they do have the tools to do. Let's not this, make that mistake. This is the thing. Last game, I favored Sengoku's comp. It's just V3 played better and Sengoku played mm. a couple of very key moments relatively poorly. We talked about the jungle interactions early on, which is less about comp, more about how your early prio is going and how you react around that. Sure. Sengoku didn't really stick the landing on their early game. And V3 no. absolutely did. They rolled around with a huge gold advantage in the late game. They still lost some fights, which is a big thing for me, which makes gives me some hope that this can go to five games still. And for me, like, there is, I mean, I, I do have my own biases in terms of how I like to see the game played and all this other stuff. But in terms of LJL team bias, I just want to see the best team make it to Worlds. And mm. it starts with series like this, showing what you can do as these big teams coming into it. These are the top seeds one and two. Mm. We want to expect a lot out of them. The loser will face the winner of CGA DFM, and they will be put through the ringer there as well with their craziness we've seen from the round one and two. Yeah. I really want to see this go to game five if I can do, but we'll have to see Sangoku step up to the plate. Yeah, the loser's match sure to be a pretty exciting one as well let's be fair you're going to be seeing dfm or cg have gone through the crucible of a couple best of fives already and both teams uh have got a lot to prove there as well and sengoku gaming fall out of the juggernaut match here don't make it to finals then you know questions have to be asked about this squad and well, what they were built to do they were built to win the ljl let's make no bones about that and losing here with the price tag especially here for a a, a minor region team that would be pretty poor, frankly. There would be a lot of questions asked. Interesting things happening at level one as we're talking about waxing lyrical about the state of the LJL. And of course, very important mm -hmm. points because, you know, we asked in spring, even though Sengoku finished second place, is a second place finish enough for what Sengoku wanted to do with this team? Um, level one ward was put in by LeBlanc, hops over the distortion. Of course, he start that ability anyway, goes and puts the ward onto that level one buff. Tracking jungle starts, very important. When you do have teams which play around the jungle so heavily like these teams, we saw what it meant in the last game. Boogie got ahead of in a couple of these trades with Blank, and now he will be scouted out starting off that red buff solo. And it's not the the five man stacks we've kind of grown used to. It's well, we not. We saw it from Sengoku. It doesn't lead to anything. I know. We've, this is not the uh the vertical jungling either actually at this point we've we've seen some unusual ones and of course there was the, the slight trickiness of leblanc here but that's about it for the first time so i'd be curious to see how these sort of perhaps more standard jungle routes plays out uh, always very interesting to see ace uh taking an electrocute trade and trading with a corrupting oh period started with a corrupting pot too i'm more used to seeing the dorans out of the um is it? but if you do take the inspiration second group time warp tonic it does sure up your laning phase very effectively so yes as you're saying not any of that vertical jungling it is going to be um these straight start starting on a buff and just kind of going a full clear. This does open up early ganks in a different sense, though. It's less about your dives. It's more about ganking straight into the laning phase. It means that potentially mid lane is not as isolated as it has been in the past three games. That's something we'll have to keep track mm -hmm. of. Because Sengar could typically have been very good around keeping Pyrian safe in this kind of style of gameplay. Aha, Paz comes in for the ward, spots the Gromp going down as Blank puts his own ward over the wall, uh, wondering where the Renekton had gone, and... They both nod to each other and go, spotted you. And uh, nice. Blank goes, curses. I've sure. been foiled again. But this is, again, regardless of how V3 gank... Uh, not gank. How they're, they're, I was about to say gank because there's a fight mid lane. But it's not actually a gank. It's just a trade. Um, but regardless <laughs> of how V3 draft and how they play around their team comps and stuff, um, they're really, really good at warding. They're really, really good at being coordinated across the map, whether that's with globals or rotations or anything like that. Being able to track out the jungler in such a key matchup like this, it's a very important skill to have, and I'm glad that V3 are being so consistent at it. I also want to point out, this is Sengoku Gaming with the first time in this series having pressure in bot side. They yeah, are shoving important. in Archer and Rhino, which haven't seen thus far and that could be a little bit of a concern because v3 have mm. really played through bot winning hard early on so in with that in mind you know that blank has gone down to the bot lane scuttle and Apperman gets prior and he goes into the top plane river and spots out boogie taking out that top plane scuttle himself blank is working his way up though and it doesn't look like boogie will be able to finish it that quickly ace okay no so he doesn't get there in time they do see it go down but he uses the smite spear lines onto blank ow yeah, uh, that's the one we're putting it. If I got hit by a spear, I think I too would go out. I'm going to be screaming in incoherently, if I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> be a man, don't oh, scream Oh, Boogie's found his way, but he's, he's on a ward. Oh, okay, ward. really, really good ward there from Sengoku to spot out this gang path. Sengoku, still well, shoved Adam, up. You know he's here. You do know. Like, actually, remember V3 knew that that ward came down because Paz saw him do it. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, 
Okay, so Apperman knows that he's just wasting the time that MT gets a face breaker. He does get a face breaker. Archer has been ignited. Oh, that's a big haymaker, but that's the flash out of NT now, and Archer still got some health shrines, and it is okay. There is no heal in this lane, though, so has to be a little bit afraid if uh, they get dived onto this tower. <laughs> Very important W landing from the center. It does mean that Archer can't follow up any follow-up autos, of course, when someone is affected by those frost stacks. You get extra damage on your auto attacks by Ash instead of having a critical strike value. That's mm -hmm. what happens. Um, of course, that crit strike increases that damage you do get anyway. So, no kill coming through in the bot lane. It doesn't ignite for NT coming through, but it will mean that, once again, priority over toward the side of Sengoku. They just keep B3 pinned under their tower, and Blank is pretty happy to just go to the other side of the map. You can see as well, it is a teleport back from Ace. It is a also a teleport back from Pyrian, but it's also... About a 10 CS lead here for this Azir once again. Mm. And which... once it, yeah. Remember this happened in game one. 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 Yes, when, yeah, as it appearing to get the lead and it was the, um, the, the, the teleports cast, uh, you spent from both sides. Ace resetting with it, at least managing to force the trade of the teleport out. This time, Chain does land. The Mark lands. Electrocute trade very nicely played there, but with the Merc treads there from Pyrian, not as much damage as you maybe like. No, but of course, Ace here, Ow. he's uh, starting to get towards the point where he can be a little bit scary, especially once he hits level 6 and the double chains start coming out, it can be pretty scary mm. to deal with. Two chains. Two chains, exactly. Uh, I wouldn't have taken LeBlanc as a rapper, but I wouldn't have taken the LEC cast as rappers either, and uh, they've been doing an alright job of it. <laughs> so uh, Very good. <laughs> yeah, it was an impressive bit of uh, production work, that one, for sure. But for now... Archer and the rest of V3 lying in wait in this bot side looking for a lane gank. They're going to teleport or come in from behind using the magical journey. Archer stepping forward, but they're not going to get it. all that much out of it. Hey, wait, I think maybe... They, I, Did you, they spot Bert? You, you do see that two people... You do see, see the two. people coming over there yeah. with the minions, I believe. I'm pretty sure that was Envision. Uh, I, like the, I like the idea there. Yeah, the playmaking's nice. Um, Perrion... Looking over to his vision, and he has priority for this bot lane scuttle respawn. Ace is now walking down, leaving a wave at tower, but I don't think it's going to be able to get there for the scuttle in time. Ooh, Ace goes, goes over and takes a shotgun to the face, which is also pretty unpleasant. Uh, I suspect that all of these things are really are... unpleasant. It's a horrific game, really. Uh, just not lethal, lot... by the way. <laughs> not lethal, oh, indeed. Uh, but Boogie now looking for a dive, and uh, V3 have managed to get themselves pressure around this bot side. And uh, that conversation I had about saying Goku Gaming Gate to shove in early. TPA. Teleport coming in, but Blank is over the back of the wall. They're going to try and get in and turn this around. Here is the return teleport. NT taken low. Blank now getting flashed on. Gets stunned in place. The spear lands. No, wait, it missed. I apologize. It looked like it landed. Now Boogie has uh, got to find his way over this wall. Gets dragged back in. Rhino finding his way through a magical journey, and Boogie survives for now. The death realm will end. And now Apper Man is caught in a difficult position. Doesn't get stunned, but does take a lot of damage. No kills, but teleports and flashes burned. So many teleports and flashes blown. Importantly, you know, we were talking about how mid lane traded teleports. Again, this comes out on show him. Ace does manage to force out the teleport of Pyrian, at least while well, Pyrian chooses to use it to maintain his lane advantage. It means he can't teleport down towards that bot side. Three, well, I mean, so the top laners both use their ultimates, use their teleports, use their flashes, and that does mean they're now going to reset and head back towards that top side. However, given the HP bar advantage for V3, they do secure themselves the first dragon of the game, and that was an ocean dragon. So, things are very even here in the early game. Dragon goes over, which is an advantage. It's slight gold leave of 200 or so here for just straight laning phase. Again, you can see the mid lane going pretty well for this Azir. He's kind of roamed a little... Ow. Oh, but she didn't roam all that much earlier because, of course, Pyrian burned the TP, so... Uh... I've got to say, actually, you know, the mid laners have been locked in lane yeah, quite yeah. a lot, and that has favoured the Azir. The, I, I believe that, mm -hmm. honestly, LeBlanc does have more potent roams, particularly at this point in the game. Yeah. Ace does go forward with the chain, but, again, he's just not really making much of a dent on Pyrian right now. He's dodged out on more chains than he hasn't, and he does have Corrupting Pot Charge, well, at least one left there in the tank. He just used it mm -hmm. to sustain back up. Okay, so... Yeah, blue buff too. Yeah. Okay, Perrin's in a really cushy place right now. And because the rest of the map isn't falling apart like the last couple of games, he's pretty happy with the situation. Yeah, for once, it's a stable map state, and, say, and Perrin's like, thank goodness, I don't have the rest of my map in <laughs> on fire. I don't think Perrin has played badly in the last couple of games. Mechanically, he's been fine. I just question some of what he's been doing with his uh, decision-making in terms of pr uh, pressure across the map and his builds. I, I, I tend to agree. Um... He's been playing for lane with his runes, and that's... And in fairness, he has been getting laning advantages. It just hasn't led to anything important enough to win the game. 
Okay, well, speaking of potentially important enough to win the game to get an advantage, Rift Herald here is being started by Sengoku Gaming, and I don't think V3 are going to be I in a position to try and contest. I Sengoku have actually got the first Herald in any of these games. I know they've got second Herald a number of times. I'm trying to remember if they've actually got that for I plates yet. I don't recall. Well, anyway, uh, that'll be something to uh, question later. Either way, first Herald going after Her uh, Sengoku in this game, and that means that they have the choice to go break open some plates somewhere across the map. Uh, touching on some itemizations, just because I see something as it's coming in. I know we talk uh, more about the first items coming in. Bramble Vest for the Moldavis yes. are built up already. That is important. It does mean that you're more... Um, so talking to some of the VCS English guys, because they, they have a number of Mordecai Kaiser aficionados on their cast there. Uh, Mordekaiser has to build for who he wants to ult in team fights. Building the Bramble Vest and going towards someone like Tabby means that center and Renekton are your targets, really. Yes. Um, center is not squishy enough. If you hit the W, sure, okay, you can start peeling yourself away. But particularly against the Renekton and the center, you're just denying them a lot of their healing. Oh, ult on the bot side. Yeah, ult is oh, forcing the cleanse out of Archer, so... Uh... He shouldn't have been there in the first place. Bard is not in lane. You've now burned a cleanse for a longer... Well, it is a longer cooldown than the Ash ult, although at rank one, it's not exactly a short cooldown either. Yeah, it's not, and Archer can have the, probably 30 seconds to a minute or so where that cooldown will not be available where the Ash Arrow is. You can kind of time that, of course, by the indicators on your screen. Let's see how that plays out, but that does mean Ash Arrow is down, and Boogie's in this red side jungle. Could be looking for something on the bar side. He's still in there. Frozen in time. Frozen in time. But there is a bar, but it's on the opposed, on, it's on his team. Yeah, I think you can freeze him in place. Who would do that? Uh, yes. Zillion, why? <laughs> Zillion and Echo screwing with the timeline once again. Yeah. You know, Bard in um, production, one of his ultimate was initially a map-wide silence, a wave which would just silence That's the entire map. Insane. Both Both teams. That's kind of cool. Then the problem is when, like, Silas came out and also when you had mirror matches of Bard, it just depended who ulted first who would win everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how Echo's initial ultimate was literally reversing the, sec the, the game four seconds. That is kind of insane yeah. as well. <laughs> now, again, these are really cool ideas. They're just very broken. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the thing is, though, like, I, I don't mind people um, designing these kind of things and seeing how they slot in, but you can't stick to your guns for the entirety of it, even just for the purpose of it being cool. Not so cool, though, is NC being rooted up. Boogie does not take the spear landing, but NC taken pretty low. He's got Haymaker, of course, which could cause problems. Yutora Mayashi. We're left in suspense. And I have no idea what's going to happen. You find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. There's another freeze frame briefly, and NT is going to have his grit worn down. Spear misses, and that's going to be the end of it, frankly. Lovely. That is a decent last embrace, but nothing more to be found. And without the spears landing for enough poke, they don't feel confident enough to go for the dive. You can see, though, that Grave is on the top side of the map and may look to return the favour to Paz over here. May well do. He's going to take away both the, the Raptors, I believe he counts jungle them, actually, taking and leaving one of the small popcorn chicken. Going to take out the Krogs, or at least be in position for a dive too. Pirin has his teleport available. He will eye, he looks like he's roaming up. Going to try and take a bite out of Paz. They know this is happening. Paz is so aware. He's on vision. He's on vision. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. on vision. They're going to try and back out. You can see with Reiner on the top end of that mini map looking to try and roam up and defend. Remember they have the Herald too. They still got to use yeah. that. It's actually just about to. Well, no, it's still got some time left from blank. Yeah, it's about half the time are just under left on that one. They've got a minute or so to use it in an effective manner. Boogie missed the spear on a popcorn chicken. I saw that one. Uh, we all saw that one. I'm going to get a little free free. See, it, I love how the, scre the stream like fixed itself just to show us that. I, I'm very appreciative of that. <laughs> of course, again, guys, it's not really our end. It's just the, the LJLN being a little, uh, little extra weird. A bit weird, so we don't get much to talk so, about that. It's worth noting, I believe that the LGL is back in um, remote setting. Yes. It is back in remote setting. It is not on station. That does bring with itself some technical difficulties and some own uh, HP difficulties. Not quite yet, because Blank dodges the spear. He does, and Boogie's not hit as many of those as he would quite like, and again, not really found the CC miss one onto the sky. I mean, if you're going to go up, I mean, you're going up against the Graves who has a dash, has water walking, uh, like he has phase rush too. It's mm. actually pretty hard to land that in isolation. Nidalee is not the same poke beast she was in season 3-4, right? No. Um, you do need CC to guarantee that spear landing, which is why ne Renekton is so nice. It's the same kind of thing with the Elise, right? It's the same kind of thing. You just, just When you have these skill shots, which are very important, if they do land, you just guarantee the fact that they do land, and suddenly you're very happy as a champion. Okay, so Mountain Drake spawning in 10 seconds. You can see that V3 have reset and are looking to be around that particular part of the map. Nidalee and Senna roaming their way down. Paz also coming into mid lane. Doesn't want to have to burn teleport if he can help it. But this is probably going to be our first big fight of the game. Yutra Mesh hasn't had I a wish, chance to reset. I hope we get to see it. <laughs> i got to hope. Yutra Mesh, importantly, has not had a chance to see it. Or to reset is more what I'm trying to get at here. He's down a little bit in terms of that itemization. It's the uncom 
untransformed mana Mune versus just item parts. That might just mean that V3 get to take Herald this for free. The Herald is summoned in mid to try and get priority. The Ace hopping over the wall doesn't land the chains, and V3 have got to be a little bit afraid the tempered fate stops the rift it Herald does but charge. now you don't have that for the fight is that going to affect things because they might need that for larger setup Pass. Pass caught by Aphman. oh he is caught by Aphman. we've got a bit of another freeze frame here that renekton could be in trouble remember he's got a magical journey which could get him through the wall i don't think it appears in the death room uh, if you... oh no actually we've we've broken out and no one has died but the uh, the uh senna railgun did come out Paz still alive but very low and that herald is still chunky away in mid lane by the way v3 don't want to give up this drake though Our shoving in the bot side. Sengoku Gaming also here at half HP, but Paz has teleport, and it's going to come back in. They're collapsing on the teleport. They are going to collapse onto the teleport. They're going to try and get it. That's oh, a good oh, shuffle oh. onto two. They get one now, but Archer over the wall, trying to put out as much damage as he can. He's doing a lot of work. Ace has got some targets if he can continue on, but that's the jungler dead, and they've still got double TP to come back in and look to contest. That's the big thing, right? So Paz teleports in, and uh, Boogie ends up dying there. There is no jungler here, but the solo lanes can teleport back in and they are both doing so right now you managed to reset spend some of that gold they just got and this will be priority towards sengoku for the second dragon Okay, that is a last embrace onto enter. You could take a bit of damage. Depends whether V3 want to contest. Ace has got teleport. We'd have to get here pretty swiftly. He's back in base, looking to teleport. Archer coming in. Paz over the wall. They're going to try and fight for it. That is now Sengoku Gaming corralled into the dragon pit. Enti, Yutura Mayashi, can you get out? It's all the flashes they're going to escape for now. But that's a lot of summoners burned. Three flashes. They do have the mobility left to get out of the pit. Let's see if anyone dies on the back end. Magical Journey does not lead to anything. So it's the Mountain Dragon at the cost of the majority majority of Sengoku summoner spells, but with the one for Nile, the first blood before that, Sengoku's still feeling pretty happy because it's the first time they've got first blood. They said they get first blood about 35% of the time. It's feeling that way right now. Make it 25% of the time. And we're going to cut into a replay and see what's going on. Well, I hope we are. <laughs> yeah, well, we definitely hope. Oh, maybe we'll get to see this again. Maybe we'll freeze again on us. That'll be... Uh... So <laughs> basically, Paz eats a full combo from Mordekaiser. He gets death round immediately, has to pop the Dominus. And he's... Uh... He's, he's up the creek again. Ace does pop over the wall, get some good damage onto Yusuru Miyashi. And the Railgun, as you said, does come out and do a decent amount of damage. Uh, unfortunately for Blank, damage calculation not quite there. The collateral damage does not kill Renekton. He gets to reset, as we were saying. But before this, you have no Tempered Fate. You have no Dominus here. And the Teleport spotted out very quickly, closed down upon. And the Face Breaker does get the stun. And we already saw that one before. It doesn't matter if it freezes right now. <laughs> it was into an Empress Divide and two people fall down. And the yeah, V3 did a decent job of kind of punishing Sengoku with resetting themselves and stuff, but they don't get any kills. I do and... like how Archer here actually does end up like firing over the wall too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does actually get pretty good value for the position he was in. Oh, Death Realm again. That is a Death Realm, but Dominus traded. We're going to see how much damage Paz can put out, but he's in a lot of danger here in this Death Realm. Death. Yeah. Comes for us all, and the Renekton falls down in the 1v1. Why does he not play this champion more? I've been wanting this for so long. He's ended up getting himself two very important death rounds in the last couple of minutes. Although the rest of his team now in a little bit of trouble on the top side of the map. Do get out to safety. That will mean that V3 are going to start up this Herald themselves. Sengoku Gaming around the blue buff. We'll see what they come to contest after the, uh, the free frame ends one more time. Again, sorry about that, guys. It is over on the LJL end. We don't get much control over that. And uh, you get to listen to us instead. Yeah, you get to, you get to, to listen to us, us complain us. about it instead. Yeah, wow, exactly. what, what a what a timeline we're in. Anyway, Harold right. here. And that's the arrow now, and that's into a face breaker into the showstopper, and Blank gets the kill onto NT. My voice goes a lot higher because that was a nice little combo. And now they're going to try and fight off around this ace over the back line. Is going to try and find something, but V3 are down three kills, and their early game skirmishing champions haven't found all that much in this game. Affirmant's pushing in the mid lane. They're looking to collapse. He does have flash, but no death. Oh, he has to flash out, but now he's going to get slowed down by the Blade of the Rooking. Pull back. D does manage to avoid it somehow, some way. But Boogie goes in, flashing away, pouncing away, and successfully escapes with his life. Ooh. It's one... Well, one for one, and the Herald over to Sengoku, all things said and done. Appen very nearly disengages with the backwards death grasp. This is at the cost of the Herald being taken by Sengoku. It's a good kill. I don't know if that was a shutdown, but the kill going up to Boogie is always nice. We know this guy is a very proficient player of the assassin style. Nidalee has himself the Phoenix Codex in inventory, though. See what that builds into later. He picked up 500 gold. That'll be the 200 gold shutdown. Okay, cool, cool. Yes, that will be it. And what that means is that he has now regained his advantage over Blank, who had uh, the run of the early games so far. He 
did. And you can see here the gold lead, 2,000 gold in favor of Sengoff Gaming with a squad that probably scales better and has better team fight potential. Mm -hmm. V3 have got to find some magic in the next sort of five to ten minutes or they are going to be in serious trouble. Or physical or true. Yeah, all either way, you. find some damage. Do the thing. <laughs> Anyway, right, so yes, um, we see once again um, Perion landing advantage. She's doing really, really well, has himself two assists. I'm trying to remember if he got any of those plates in the mid lane too. Um, so, yeah, looking pretty good for this Azir. And of course, Aphaman doing Aphaman things. This time in the good side of things. Boogie saw the wall come down, sweeps it out, and will uh, emerge from the bush he was in, afraid of where Sengoku are getting. Well, probably quite rightly so. Mm -hmm. You see NT and Blank in around the Gromp, trying to push in as uh, Pyrian is here with Wait. the bot tier 1. Wait, that's the going to comes down. It is going to fall, but uh, whether Pyrian can get it first, that's a good tempered fate though. Yotoromashi now in trouble, does not have flash, he's only got heal, the chains, and he can't get out. He takes a last embrace and he is put into death's embrace. Reiner uses the magical journey to escape best he can. Does not have the cosmic binding though, throws out the exhaust and he's getting chased down. Can Blank find the kill here? He's going to find something. Flash out for oh. Reiner, but still not enough. The challenging smite is enough to claim the life of Reiner, who played that one cleverly but just not cleverly enough <laughs> no not quite tricksy enough to get out from that mid lane play they take down yutoromiyashi he might have been able to heal out of the tempered fate he does it late afterwards the chain lands from ace and leblanc ends up putting down enough damage that the ash goes down for v3's only second kill of the game it has been relatively slow paced and i think that has been favoring sengoku so far mm -hmm. but uh now finally i've turned in the momentum for v3 Okay, Boogie managed to steal away the red buff. Boogie going to try and turn it around Ow. on the blank, but takes a lot of damage, getting flashed away over, but that's the railgun for the shield. Dragon is being aggroed onto blank, which is oh. very fortunate for that is That is a very godlike dragon block, body block by the dragon. The last auto from Graves would have gone through onto Boogie. Railgun shield comes in, and Boogie survives. No, uh, right. It's going to try and steal it, not quite enough. It's Mordekaiser who secures it, though. Now, Pass is teleported in. V3 are looking for the fight, saying Goku Gaming in here. That's going to be the shuffle on to Boogie. He's just dead in the water. Blank goes down in trade though, so it's a one for one at this point. Aberman has got the death realm, but at the back, Enti has got two, trying to buy time. Keep the squad of V3 away. Paz falls to Pyrian soldiers, and it is a two for one and dragon to Sengoku game. Oh man, V3 are struggling so much with this Mordekaiser. He's disrupting the, uh, the back line so much. This Renekton is just not having any kind of impact in these fights, and this is why we want to see a bit more of it. But now Aperman is caught out. Will he be able to get to turret in time? Okay. He's running. The Tempered Fate comes down. He does backstep, and now he's in trouble. Takes a lot of damage. Has got a death. Grasp onto Reiner. Can't quite find the kill in the arrow. In turn, with the Haymaker, put Ace into the dirt. Binding. And now Yutoromashi getting bound, getting slowed down. That will be a kill for Archer return, but here comes Pyrian. The Azir, his ear. He's got his SKT skin on. Remember who I am. And he takes that one for a double kill at the end of it all. Well, as Azir says, you need not follow, but you must witness the death of your teammates, apparently. <laughs> comes down with a teleport. And we're going right back to the start of this invade. Boogie and Archer trying to take away a red buff. Boogie does get it. And uh, we see what happens at the end of this. Blank flash over, but the respawn of the dragon. Look at this. The last auto oh, beautiful. might have ended up taking Boogie down into a point where he could have uh, been still followed on with that phase rush and the water walking active from Grace. Doesn't happen, though. Dragon quickly goes over to the side of Sengaku, and then the fight is started in in earnest. NT at the back line trying to zone off Ace and Reiner. Paz pops his all early, but Paz, he dives into this fight, but he's just immediately death-realmed by the Mordekaiser. He just can't do anything even when he's trying to get that better angle into the fights. Uh, NT just pulls off Ace and Reiner results. They can't be involved in the fight looking to get poke out. Just keeps them far enough away that they get the easy kill on to Paz at the end of it all. There's this little debacle in the bot side. Ah, okay, let's see what happens. Alpha Man has enough movement speed. He does the fancy feet thing, uses the desk grasp, pulls in Rhino once more, and he just uses the limits of his HP bar to make sure he makes it out alive. You told me Ashi though, oh. is caught out by Cosmic Binding on the turn, and that signals the go-ahead from V3 to try and get that kill. Of course they do. Oh, you saw he's caught again. That is problematic, and that's oh. with Baron up. 
Your AD carry is dead. V3 could look to move over. This is this is Yusori Miyashi. This is one of the stalwarts of the LGL region. In spring, he was our most consistent player right up until, up until the finals. This guy was so hard to get anything out of. He was trying to get blood from a stone, but now he is bleeding profusely because he's been bashed over the head by Reiner and crew. You can see there as well. Quick check in from the observer pointing up. The center has 40 souls, which is... Not, not that, great. Not not that great. great, and part of that, of course, is that Farming Santa does get less souls, and that's problematic, but... I mean, when you're trying to deal with the range of the Azir and the Mordekaiser, so those souls are really important. 70 is the break point, right? Uh, 80. 80. 80. So it's every, every 20 gives you the extra range. Increase. Okay. So, so when you get to 80, couple. 100, that's when you start feeling a lot more safe around about the, the Ash, the Azir, and maybe you can start kiting out the Mordekaiser a bit more. However, at this point, with Leandris and going into the Nash's Tooth, Aphamon is just doing so much work. I don't think it matters who he ults now. I think he just kills them. Well, there's a Bon Jovi tune that goes with that 14 soul mark, but uh, I think he'd be wishing he'd be a little bit faster than halfway there, that's uh -huh. for sure. Like, Wait, where are you going with that? Uh, <laughs> it feels like in some ways V3 are kind of living on the prayer in this one, right? They are down pretty significantly as far as comp wise goes at this point uh... in the game. Like, it's 3,000 gold for Sengoku Gaming. They've got this Mordekaiser at 2, 1, and 3, and Azir at 3, 0, and 3, who's just a pretty terrifying point. Yes, they're getting picks onto Utah Miyashi, and yes, the Tempered Fates are pretty good, but you need to get that much more consistently if you want to try and win mm. uh, the later this game goes. Okay, well, important stuff to note. We do have a 40% CDR margin broke by Ace. He's going to have his combo up a lot. His distortion on the lowest cooldown it will be during this game. And we do have the Muramana transformation for Archery. He has the Dust Blade alongside that. So his damage, uh, comparative to his state and the rest of the game, pretty high right now. Also have the buildings of Lich Bane and the very cheap item of the Athenes onto Boogie. You know, the combat effectiveness of V3 is not, uh, it's not like it's dire. You can still win a lot of these fights. If the Athenes comes through onto the center, keeps her alive long enough to try and get that extra auto key reset onto someone like the Ash and kill them, they can still find these isolated skirmishy fights uh, and try and get away with a couple of kills. The problem is, if you start to do isolated skirmishy fights, this Mordekaiser is going to take someone back for, for his troubles. Uh, he won't be taking the Renekton though, who's gone for QSS. He's tired of being in the death realm for the entire game. He's tired of not being able to play frontline. Yeah, um, my problem is now that Paz, yeah, you got that QSS, but... You now have so little combat stats. You're only level 13 compared to Aphemus 14 too. You have that level deficit. I'm wondering how much impact Paz can really have on these fights. Of course, he has found some good angles. If he does manage to QSS that death realm, maybe we see these fights go a bit more in favor of V3. Okay, so it's going to be dragon number three. V3 around, looking to try and find some pokes, some side lane damage. Blank dashing forward onto Boogie, who does flash over the wall. Ace does get a chain in, and that's going to be a spear as well. Up and take about half HP, but now Blank stepping Guardian. forward. Can't quite find the kill, but Ace is going to have to back out. Does have teleport, though. Tempered Fate lands onto Aphomet and a little else. So there's a few quite critical ultimates down. Collateral damage is a big one, of course, but Ace is going to have to try and teleport back in. Is going to do so into lane. Paz has a flank as well, but Sengoku Gaming are death balling. They want them to get themselves to this cloud soul point. Boogie over the back, throwing some spears, lands it onto Blank. Ace hops over as well. Gets a lot of damage done with a railgun as well. Flashing from Paz. That's an Emperor's Divide, but it's only onto Reiner. That's realm. not fantastic. Boogie is in the death realm, but he's way over the wall. Can't find the kill. And actually, NT goes down to Reiner. And I think V3 have found the fight they were looking for. Buki is healthy. Apermen and Pyrian, though, could still be trouble. Blank has got low HP, has had to back away. And they do secure this. And Apermen now in a very oh, challenging position. Oh. Ace finds them in the bush. Yutori Miyashi has no HP. Blank needs to escape. So does Yutori. They're going to get a lot out of this. The jungler falls down. The resyncs or the resync timers are going to be awful. Archer will surely fall here piercing darkness claims another that's four kills for v3 it's going to be barren as well and sengoku gaming you had it all and somehow some way v3 find a fight that could turn this game they all do. around shot through the heart and it looks like it's is to blame in this case goes down to archer at the very end of that play afferman doesn't find the big ultimate doesn't manage to take someone with him he's chunked out so many different ways ace and boogie doing a lion's share of the poke work during that fight but now they have to try and finish off this baron and Pyrian is alive with his ult Teleport coming in. There will not be a death run for Apermen, but V3 look to turn it, look to pull off. They don't get the Baron as a result. And the Tempered Fate is on to Pyrian. He, he doesn't flash. He's got to find the way away. That is a very critical Emperor's Divide cooldown that comes back up at the absolute last moment. Arrow comes through. It lands onto Paz. Nobody else. But now V3 have the back, and Sengoku Gaming could think about going for the Baron they, themselves. They do have a level 14 Azir. This is a threat, and they have the Leandries onto the Mordekaiser. They're still around that area of the map. Paz 
does recalls. He doesn't have QSS this time, though. He used it on the arrow. That means the Death Realm onto him is once again an option. Baron fight goes on whether the Purple Worm is dead or alive. And we'll leave the Bon Jovi puns for a little bit before I cause too much pain in my casters. Because there's a fight to talk about. Ace takes some soldiers to the face, but that means there is no soldiers on the far side. NT goes in with a showstopper into the backside, trying to keep Boogie away from the pit. It is secured. Sengoku Gaming have got the Baron. That will be a kill. Back and forth there. It is two for one in favor of Sengoku Gaming, who now get out with Baron. V3 tried to turn their full kill advantage into the Baron, but Pyrian's danger was too high. 4 0 4. Enemy health bars not found. And they are up 4,000 gold with the Baron, despite a couple plays there going in favour of V3. Well, thank God we can get back to the Bon Jovi references, because that's less of a coin flip, more of a roulette coming in <laughs> right at the end with the Baron. And it looks like Sengoku have come away with a massive advantage after Steam staving off the first attempt by V3. Going back to the Dragon fight in this one replay, let's see exactly what happened. Atma starts this fight at half HP. That's really not where you want to be, even as the Mordekaiser, who is relatively strong in this game. Ace comes in. I really want to praise Archer, not uh, Boogie and Ace for this first part. We see that the spear lands onto, onto Blank. Ace comes through with a chain. The ult comes through from uh, uh, Archer. So it does so much damage onto the key targets of Sengoku. And I thought that if these fights got very split and messy, it would favor Sengoku. But it looks like V3 managed to problem solve their way out of this pretty dire situation, get themselves uh, a dragon at the very end of it, and try and force things a bit later, and then unfortunately of course the Baron happens and things are right back in the uh, wheelhouse. <laughs> the driving wheel- I, I, in the fate- it's going good for Sengoku. <laughs> that one. Sengoku Gaming have found themselves back in the driver's seat, I believe would be the phrase you were looking yes. for. Ah, oh, thank you. And they're going to start shoving in well. over here. Ace has got himself a Banshee's fell, it's three items on Senna, who does do a lot of damage versus these squishy, squishy members could still be trouble. There are no teleports available V3, which means there are no flanks from behind just by that particular summoner spell to be aware of. And it's already a 3,000 goal Baron buff power play with Sengoku Gaming shoving in to get as much out of this as they can. They've got 6,000 gold in the oh, lead. Halfman. Halfman could be in trouble though. He takes a lot of damage. He's, He's at half someone. HP. He's going to try and put the Death Realm down, but it's just too late. There's a QSS and a Mikhail's on right now. And he just... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I just realized that. That's, that's classic. Oh, oh, oh. oh Utah Mayash had to heal to get his way out of that, but that stops the base being broken. Hey, and the men can't get away with well, murder this time. What? Literally, because that's what he does. He murders people. <laughs> and uh, Wait, does you, fall down on the bot side. Utah Mayash finally managed to escape a tempered fate. Reiner has had his number this game. We were questioning how Reiner would perform on this pick throughout this game, his first professional game of Bard. And so far, he's been doing relatively well. The question is, is he going to be able to do well enough to lock up enough people to try and start the fights in V3's advantage? Because right now, Sengoku tend to be winning everything they put their hands to. You see the Senate, 4, 1, and 7, 3 items, pretty damn strong. We said we were a little bit wary of where the soul camp was at, but that's good news. Problem is, though, if you look at the CS advantage, there's a zero in the middle, and it's 80 up on this LeBlanc. Mm. He's got two items, so that's not bad, but... Yeah, and Pyrrhus just finished the Meryl yeah. I, Again, I don't know why this guy has such an aversion towards the Leandries, which would be quite nice this game. But Renekton has healing, Nidalee, LeBlanc has Ravnus Hunter, and then mm. you have healing from Senna and Bard It's not bad, and at least you've got something on your team with healing reduction. I don't mind that. Makes sense to me. I agree. It's uh, is a basically a full item over this LeBlanc though, and Azir is pretty damn good at scaling, and he's been finding himself in a lot of five v fives. He's got four kills and four assists. Watch and out no for Boogie Ace poked out really well around the last fight. The spears are starting to land. Let's see if we can get anything more right. solid than that. That is a temp fate that hits absolutely no one. That could be problematic. Period. No, taken pretty low because actually there's good poke from V3. They've got the LeBlanc who can hop over the wall. They've got Boogie who's throwing spears out. They've got this Senna that can be similarly really irritating. There's no Callista this game. There's no no Callista. You can see though. Sengok gave me a little bit wary of stepping forward and that's just a straight secure of the Drake and now Sengok gave me can't find the engage. They find the arrow but little else. They've got priority in mid lane. And that's the soldiers coming over. Ace hopping in. Finds a chain onto Blank, who does take him very low. Has to collateral damage. The railgun comes out, and now the health bars are looking pretty dire for Sengoku Gaming. In goes Renekton. Finding as much damage as he can. And he has to flash out because that curse of the Black Mist lands. The Empress Divide is too late. And here comes the Nidalee. She's got a shutdown onto the Azir. Ace is hunting as well. And that set has no chance. The showstopper is show stopped. 
and V3 find another fight at the back of a dragon. What is going on? Sengoku Gaming surely had the advantage there. And at the turn of the tide, look to the west on the dawn it's of the fifth done. day. It's not the end, but Ryder's gone Whoa! way too deep. He gets popped out. He thought he could find Yutoro Mashi alone by himself, but Arjuna has to flash away. The Curse of the Black Mist misses Aces goes in, but that's health bars low. Blank was in the right place at the right time, and he's a pretty scary Graves. And he comes to you at the turning of the tide, and V3 turn the tide with the poke around that dragon. I pointed it out, I was asking, hey, look, these guys did really well at the last one, let's see if they can do it again. See, let's keep track of how many important skill shots land. Boogie starts throwing out these spears, misses that one, but Ace Gales comes forward, starts trucking forward with chains, just making sure that the rest of the team is corralled. Sangoku are not com committing to this fight. They don't have that dedicated go button besides the Ash ult, but there are so many QSSs that that is not really enough to commit to anything in any semblance of a large fight. They get one person CC, they're immediately QSS away from. We see the chains, see the spears landing onto blank, the Oof. ult comes through, and suddenly this Graves is no longer able to fight. He's too short range to start trying to regen. He has to smite the damn raptors to try and get in uh, enough HP, and then he still doesn't get around to turning it into that fight. Pyrian can't disengage with the Emperor's Divide, and the fight just keeps rolling forward for V3. Ah, uh, yeah, and this is the problem, Sengoku Gaming don't have the engage. They want V3 to come into them. They want them to arrive in the Death Realm, where the Emperor's Divide can push them back. Fight that front to back. They want prime position around those objectives, so V3 come into them. It's worked before, but they're struggling at this point, because V3 are kind of keeping them away with the range advantage they've got going on at this point. Uh, we've seen the gold graph, the gold difference on screen there. <laughs> um... This is the problem, right? You're meant to be getting more powerful as the game goes on. We were talking about scaling. Hey, Sengoku, they've got some really good late game carries. That is just not the case right now. They just cannot find ways to make these fights work. And a lot of so it is because of, is, there's a lot of QSSs. And in each of these fights where the fight is not cleanly committed to soon enough into the uh, the objective kind of fights, V3 are winning the poke battle. And he gets stunned up. He gets chained up. The Ash Arrow is coming out. But there is Appleman on the side. He's got Archer, but little else. Now Ace hopping forwards. Gets a tempered fate onto Appleman as the chain procs as well. The last embrace will be Appleman's doom. Boom! Entity's in the back line, but he has to go gold because he can't find that's a big collateral damage though. At the end of it, I have to keep my voice carefully modulated here because V3 once again find the two kills as Sengoku Gaming ran into their deaths there. QSS is just so huge. You try and you can see what they're trying to do there. Sengoku were trying to force out the QSS with the Ash ult and then immediately follow up with the uh, Mordekaiser ultimate in itself because you can't you can only QSS one of them. So if you end up catching Archer and the Mikhail's comes out first, and then Appleman starts wailing on them with his ultimate. It doesn't work out, the arrow misses, and the fight goes in the way of V3. Now, once again, it's the Baron star. Pyrian is alive once again, has flash, has ult. Can he pull it off? They don't have vision, and Ace is around the corner. He's looking to hop over, cause much trouble. He's again. Pyrian taken out of the fight by a well-timed chain combo, and Ace... Probably wins them this Baron purely off that play off the back of the boat. Another guy. chain lands, gonna land with the blank this time. Hey, he doesn't get over the wall with the collateral damage, but the teleport start coming in. Reiner could be in a spot of bother. He's gonna try and escape, but Appleman is here. He gets a death grasp. He gets the darkness rising, and he will get the bard. But it's four people out with Baron. Cloud Drake will be spawning in about 50 seconds, though, and Boogie's going to come over and secure this Scuttle Crab. V3 aren't out of the fight yet, no, no, but they look like they were done. More than actually just pushing in the top lane as it stands right now. Appleman just used his TP. They're just going to shove Wave into turret and back off. I was wondering whether they started trying to push for a top lane inhibitor. Trade that for the dragon instead. Okay, right. Sengoku, they had such a lead in this game. We were talking about it. Hey, they, this, everything was in their hands. But V3 have found a way to make this comp work in the late game. They're using their mobility, their range advantage to extend these fights, knowing that Sengoku don't have a clean engage option, and then making it work because they're just tearing through the health bars of Sengoku before the fight is committed to in full. 5-1 and 11 is this Senna. 7-2 and 4 is this Nidalee. And hell, if they get a Cloud Soul, that is... Probably four members that use that ability pretty damn well. Nidalee gets the increased speed. The, 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 the old cooldown reduction, really huge for LeBlanc. She just gets these poke combos so often, and look how much poke she's doing. Oh, Appleman taken so low. He's just going to get shut out. He's done. He's yep. dead. V Sengoku Gaming going to try and push out the dragon. They do secure it before the Temper Fate comes up, and now Blank is in trouble. They're in the back of the fate. Yutori Miyashi goes down. They stop the Cloud Soul, but at what cost? There is still a minute and a half of Baron Buff, and they've lost two members. 
Lost two members. They might have lost the Dragon 2v3, but they just don't care. They've got more gold. Now they can push in with their Baron buff, try and break open the base of Sengoku without the AD carry being alive to try and wave clear. And I thought we would be going to a game five. I Jab, thought same here. Same we here. would be seeing V3 be forced to that position, but Sengoku Gaming are losing out these late game fights in a way I was not expecting. But now V3 shoving in, want to go to the final straight away. Blank does a lot of damage Boogie. on the ace, but Boogie nearly gets empty, dodges out of the true damage of the Haymaker. Boogie very, very low, but there is healing available if Senna can get there. That is the massive heal actually from the E as well. Remember, Athene's on to oh, this Nidalee. I mean, she can stack up pretty damn well. There's yes. an Ocean Drake as well as something. And they'll just back over to this bot lane tier two. They'll claim the easy gold. They've got nearly 4,000 gold already. Ash Arrow That's coming all. down. It lands onto Paz, but he swiftly QSS. His teleport now coming in. They don't want to allow Sengoku Gaming a chance to get into this fight. Now, Appermen might be too far forwards, might be in danger. Senna secures the turret, and that will be 4,000. 371 gold thus far in favor of V3. Temper Fate misses now. Sengoku Gaming feeling bolded to perhaps step forwards. Look at Enti. He's off to the side. He wants the showstopper. Look at, look at Archer too. He's just walking forward every time Rapid Fire is up. He's taking a chunk out of someone on Sengoku. He has his own Q and his, uh, the Bard Shrines to keep himself topped up as well. Yeah, I've not seen what the center soul mark is at at this point, but I suspect it's got a little bit higher. I suspect he's hit that next break point at the very least. Keep your eyes on that bottom left corner of the screen whenever Archer is holding on 92 souls. He's yeah. hit the 80 soul breakpoint. He's not very far away from that 100 soul breakpoint. He is long enough range at this juncture to really threaten pretty much everybody on Sengoku. Yeah, absolutely. And as who is already threatening everyone on Sengoku is Ace. Ace's LeBlanc has shown up to play. It's reached late game. He might not have had the early game advantages, but he's hit all the items he needs to poke out people in fights and hold people accountable, making sure Perion can dash into the pit, chunking out Blank, landing double chain onto Aphamen. Each time he's involved in a play, someone on Sengoku has to pay a lot of respect to him, and Sengoku already have to save so many of their tools to try and find one of those engagers, because they're struggling so hard to right now and we've seen the stats graph we've seen the goal graph and i'm just gonna say put your hands up and scream if you want to go louder because <laughs> that is a hell of a roller coaster drop we've got oblivion here in the uk and uh, it feels a little bit like we're on one of those hardcore roller coasters right now well if you're sengoku best not look down because these are some uh Pretty fast drops, sudden drops and stops happening in this game, and they're gonna have to find something pretty sudden of themselves before they get poked out before one of these next fights. Make sure to keep all hands, arms, and other peripherals Small inside, inside the, the moving car, because otherwise, outside of that death ball, or even in that death ball, Archer is liable to lock them off with a well-timed shot. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, wow, it's just amputation by the railgun. That sounds that sounds really horrible. It, it definitely does. Minute and a half, roughly, to both the Baron and the Cloud Drake. It would be Cloud Soul for either team at this juncture as well. Sengoku Gaming, though, might have finally found priority into the river for the first time in a while. Enti hopped over the wall, didn't have Banshees popped. Emboldened right now by that particular item pickup. I mean, Ace hopped over the wall. Sorry, yes. So it's like, Who wow, say? wow, Enti has, oh. Enti has <laughs> APs. Wow, it's new meta, AP set. I didn't know oh, this dear. could break this champion. Oh, well, yeah, don't, don't listen to it's me. It's like then. 1,000 AP one-shot, oh my god, Rito nerf this. Uh, I was hoping I was talking about LeBlanc, and instead, I, I mean, it's, been, I, it's been a long series, I, I could definitely see, I, I don't know whether set does have any AP ratios on his W or something, but I could definitely see a full AP it set would be one very shot. very silly, yes. <laughs> I would hate it with a passion, but, um, but I would love yes. to see it. It's like, you remember, um... AP Renekton, who basically pentacles with his W, just comes no, in and it was his, people. Oh, it was his, uh, that was Rengar, you mean? Yeah, Rengar. That's oh, what I meant. Renekton. Oh, sorry, oh. I've done it again. Because, see, so, he, uh, has an, an NT, has an AP, he, has an, he has an AP ult, uh, ratio uh, on his uh, ultimate, and that's it. Yeah, it's, it's only like 0.1 a second either, so it's actually not even that <laughs> <laughs> Really quite bad, Sam. So, yeah, don't, don't do that, guys. Uh, AP Rengar is entertaining. Listen to my builds, not his. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Okay, 20 seconds still cloud. Play that in normals with friends Five seconds still Baron. I think Sengok just needs to try and commit to this objective and try and force a fight with V3 running into them because they're not finding much success in running into V3. They are shredding this Baron. V3 are going to come over and contest. Boogie is around the back, but Enti's going to try and stop him off. It's just gone. They don't get there in time. Can they escape? Sengoku Can they escape? Gaming need to escape. The Tempered Fate is dashed away from but Appermen now in the back of the pit. May need to flash. V3 is still looking for this fight. But remember, this is how Sengoku wanted to Ace fight. The they wanted people to get away from them. Paz went golden, does get out. 
And that actually is now Ace over the back trying to poke out. V3 lose the Baron, but they're going to try and claim Cloud Soul as recompense. Okay, so there are two teleports available for Aphromon and Pyrian. Of course, they have the Baron recall too. With the Home Guard, they might be able to get here in time to contest, but will the Dragon already be gone? Ace is similarly recalling, as has Paz. There's double teleports from both sides. Sengoku give open over the Cloud Soul to get themselves a Baron. I think that does actually suit their purposes a little bit better. They already have their ult cooldown reduction, and they just need so some way to force into v3 without them just disengaging from every fight with the siege potential of baron maybe that's it okay critical strike chance now it's 75% for archer on this Senna. he's Absolutely pretty damn strong it's, wow. it's more than that because he has his passive yeah. it's, it's I that's what, that's what i was reading was uh, was the passive uh, right. yeah, they hold it on screen. No, the thing is that he has 75 cr uh, critical strike from, oh, um, from, passive, from yes. his items. Yeah. Right? So he's got Infedge and he's got Rafa. Oh, no, 75% from his back. Yeah, I get That's it. I get with it. With uh, me? I get with it. me? Oh, okay. I'm, so good. Oh, I'm so good at reading things. Yeah, this is why I have the eyes and you yeah. have the brain, is the way it works. Yeah. We uh, fall unfortunately, very un disconnected at times. But Yeah, unfortunately. All right, well. Now that that little bit of confusion has been dealt with, Sengoku Gaming might have found themselves some advantage, but Ace on this side lane with enough AP to him is probably not a bad split pushing it's, threat it's right now. Awful, but then you've got Aphromon on the top side. He does have his ult. Looks like Sengoku wants to force on this turret. That's the arrow. It's on to Paz, who just doesn't seem to care all that much about that. And Sengoku Gaming still struggling to find Set. a engage, but et go empty goes in. He's looking to prove me wrong. Temper Fate catches three though. That is a massive disengage. And now Sengoku Gaming are on the retreat. Ace is back, hops in, gets the chain, and the. Inhibitor falls, but Sengoku Gaming must escape now. They force out the teleport from Ace, they get the inhibitor, and their bot lane inhibitor is in turn safe. That is an absolute win for Sengoku, because now they have something in terms of wave pressure to play around, and still the dregs of this Baron buff, which has just fallen off now actually as we speak, has given them enough to play around on the map. It has been our closest game oh, it's far. It's thus minute. far. <laughs> we have got... 30, well, 35-ish seconds at this point to play with with that Baron buff, but I don't think they're going to get much more out of getting wave push at this point. NT got caught by the last embrace. He could just fall down, went too far forwards. LJL stream, why do you freeze at this point? This could be absolute disaster, and we don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. It was the one kill. You told him actually escaping by the looks of it. NC did not end up using his Haymaker. I was wondering if it was Grendel for a second there. He's, he's <laughs> the guy that has the once again bit of a, oh, whoopsie, I shouldn't have walked there. They tried to do that. NC walks in trying to get some vision. It doesn't work. He loses his life. And Sengoku set back just a little bit. Okay, Boogie hops forward here. 9, 2, and 5 on this. Oh, so fair. Nidalee, Zonya's death cap, Lich Bane. He ends up on a squishy member and they, die. <laughs> they will die. Well, I'm pretty sure if he ends up on Apperman, I'm uh, pretty sure he can solo that person out. You're both level 18. You de I mean, it's full build for the jungler. At this point, the junglers are as relevant carries as there are a lot of the other people on the map, too. There's a lot of damage in for this Graves as well. He needs to complete the more of Malmorsh. This, this is like 2018 thing, junglers. <laughs> Uh, when they were absurdly strong and they could do anything. Uh, it was it, 2019 wasn't so bad for us either. I'll, I'll put that <laughs> one out there. I was a big fan of that particular meta. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tian sends his regards. Tian does send his regards. Oh, yeah, I got a pretty good game with that one as well. Uh, Reiner might be in a spot of bother. And you can see Boogie has claimed the Scuttle Crab down here. So V3... Got to be a bit of wise. You can see that Paz is dealing with the super minion shoving on the top side, but Ace is not on vision. He's behind this pit. He's got this a lot LeBlanc of damage too. Has got whoa, you know, a world where he just destroys someone, catches someone off guard. You can see Sengoku Gaming shoving in, but they want to be around for. Oh, it's not even like an Elder Dragon spawning anytime soon. No, I think they're just trying to get some priority, get some vision where they can. Now we see Yutori Miyashi and Pyrian are separated from the rest of the group. Aphromon similarly too. The question is, can Sengoku pop his Banshees and then CC him to kill him? It's a very hard thing to do when you don't have someone as obvious as like a Nautilus or a Leona. To instantly just, just uh, twitch reaction, try and react to that LeBlanc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's got himself a pretty good late game scenario to find himself in. Azir as well is starting to get towards his max build. Is just a Zonya's completion away. Has death cap in inventory now. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder, there was a game in Spring Slope between these two teams, which went to 57 minutes before ending. We These teams are not strangers to playing the long game and no. trying to win it over. It was Sengoku that won that one. Ace meant to find Ace and she flashes. Yes, you're right. I uh, was out of distortions. and he had to flash out of the ult range. He just mm. had to hope it wasn't channeled by Aperman. 
who is nearly a very, very dead LeBlanc there. She hasn't got a QSS for herself, remember, is relying on other people. I don't believe you can get mikhail out of a death realm. Uh, I believe not, no. Yeah, so, uh... Actually, well, I'm not sure about that. Possibly. Maybe sure. you can do it off the, uh, the portrait. No, no, but, so, I mean, I don't know whether, um, because Mikhail's doesn't work on Suppression, for instance. Yes. It doesn't work on Malzahar. I don't actually know whether it works on Malzahar. Oh, no, Malzahar. On Mordecai's role. Either way, it has been built up, and Archer has, uh, not actually ended up being death realmed yet, so I presume it's okay. <laughs> it's gone all right. There's, uh, you see NT in the back lines looking to do what Ace was trying to do just a moment ago. Oh, but... NT behind enemy lines. Oh. Not seen. Is he going to go for it? Is he going to go so for it? He, he knows, knows Ace is, is there. Oh, he's going to try this and find a way back. Archer could be in so much trouble. NT's there. Has he found the winning play? But the showstopper goes the wrong way. Archer has got, got flash. Yes, he goes down. Second death of the game and it's a shutdown onto Pyrian. They saw Ace go the wrong way and NT's flank works in the way way that aces did not they have baron alive and they can't contest they're down remember they're down this incredibly fed center Sengoku Gaming might just have done it. They might have done it. And a secret agent, NC, a man after my own heart, he ends up playing the mind game. The smoke and mirrors works out with the reset with 10 seconds left on the Elder Dragon. I think Sengoku bought themselves not just one of these super buffs, but two. Well, I don't think V3 want to give it away. You can see Boogie shoving in that bot wave. Wants to get it as close to that turret as it possibly can. See if it can claim that turret. And actually, yeah, you see they're backing away. They're giving it up. I think they have to. I don't think they have the ability to fight without the center. 20 seconds left on the respawn. Not even able to fire the ult from base. It's going to go down. And Sengoku, they were struggling so hard to find and engage. It takes a monstrous flank from NC in the most risky of scenarios, skirting between vision and champions galore. Does find it, and he finds the perfect target. The person without the QSS, the QSS flash away from the set ultimate. It pays off big. And it is synced buff timers as well. That's yeah. what you call, well, timed. It's about half a second off on each, but they have roughly two minutes to play with all the damage in the world. Yeah, so you have a six item Graves, six item Ash coming in shortly too. My six item Mazir. Six item Mazir, even more painful than the last game. Now, actually, Ash not able to finish off that mortal. A reminder still has the executions calling in inventory. And let's see how this happens. You see V3, they just don't see him. The Hawk shot comes through. Archer starts to retreat, even with the Cloud Soul movement speed. Not enough for NT to not find his man. And he does finish off the kill. The ult not coming through. What a pick off from NT. Well, that could have broken this game wide open. NT's had a rough game. He's won five and five. He's walked up in places he really shouldn't I'm have. But the, you make one play like that and everything is redeemed. Much like the rest of this series, NT's scoreline might not flatter him, but I do think he's been trying to make those plays to seal off the game. He ends up finding it there. The owner, of course, we saw him shut down the uh, Callista on various instances too. If he finds one more pick like that, that could be the game ending. NCA's hopping forwards and it's not like V3 don't have damage. They've just got to be so afraid. There comes the railgun. That's a tempered fade on Tutorial Miyashi. He's at half HP as well. Sengoku Gaming break the turret, but they're very low. Have to back away. They can't take the fight. Can't take it. And I think a lot of that is just because Ackerman is just holding so strong now. He doesn't have himself uh, a Thornmail at this point. He does have everything else completed in his inventory. But if you dive into an Ashu immediately ults you, even a couple of autos, an auto volley auto will take down most of your HP with this amount of damage on the Ash. Even so, with Elder buff, with Baron buff, Sengoku Gaming don't get inhibited. Have to no. break. To have to pull away. It took, like Doom. you saw that railgun just did half the health of an Ash there. So, so really, the name of the game now is Sengoku. Can you get that vision for NT to try something like that again? Does it have to be Appermen doing that? If it is V3 funneling into Sengoku, we've seen how that works before, and we know that that's what Sengoku wants to force around objectives. But they already did that with the Elder and the Baron. There's nothing left for them to do that for the next couple of minutes. They just don't have that option. If you run into the Azir and the Ash, yeah, things go well for you. But the V3 don't really have any motivation to do that right now. And Senna has herself 129 souls. That perma Gosh. scaling is absolutely ridiculous. With the rapid fire cannon, it's just going to hit someone like a truck. You can see Ace on the side is not on vision. That ward just timed out as well. Sengok Gaming, got to be very afraid. You can see Appermen in the top side trying to shove in this wave. Buffs have now ended. Boogie takes a bit of a chunk there, but has got a Senna behind him, remember. And of course, his own Athenes does a fair amount of okay. work. Spears landing. Here comes Ace Utori. Is in so much danger. The chain misses. Good lord. Tempered fate in as well, but the railgun comes out. Utori actually now desperately low. Blank trying to back out. The health bars are so the ash arrow thrown out in desperation to save lives. Enti takes a spear to the face. The haymaker isn't enough. He falls. Appermen can't chasing. go for. 
anything more. Ace, hunting, looking for more damage. You can see the magical jump. He needs to teleport out. He needs to get something. Can they find him? They find the stun. Alperman is dead. Boogie claims him with a spear. And now, can V3 find more with the big death timers? That's over 60 seconds without the top lane. And no teleport, remember. He burned it to try and escape. We're 52 minutes in, over 170,000 gold has been earned this game, and it is not enough to finish off the Nexus just yet. We have 30 seconds on NT, 50 seconds on Appam, and V3 will look to push into Sengoku's side of the map for the first time in what feels like forever. Look at that horde of meeps behind Reiner, but it looks like the collateral damage has managed to get a little bit of wave clear down. teleport, them. it's not going to be enough. That is forcing the flash out of Utorimash with a tempered fate there as well. Inhibitor, now under siege, V3 want the end, they smell blood in the water and Sengoku Gaming are bleeding, are running, have two Nexus turrets between them and the end. end, but they don't end 52 and a half minutes on the clock and the longest game we've had this season in the LJL has been Split. 57. <laughs> Has been 57, yeah. remember. It's going to be darkness right now for Sengoku Gaming. Yutori Miyashi has no summoners. He's got to be so afraid. Whoever steps the wrong way here, Archer stepping forward. The magical journey is here, and this could be the magic required. Ace over the wall, gets onto NT again. The chain landing blank, running away as well. The railgun comes out, but V3 can't find the kills. The That's an Ashol onto, a onto Archer. He's got to get out. He's got to burn the Cle QSS, I apologize. Of course, he's got Cleanse too. That particular champion too. Oh my god, the Banshee's fell saves Pyrian's life. But it is now popped. And V3 tried to find the... <laughs> The emerging Sengoku Gaming as they tried to sneak out of their base and nearly secured them a couple kills that got them the game, but <laughs> swift trigger finger saved Sengoku's life. Every player has just the finals in their eyes trying to make these game winning plays, but everyone's just over pushing it. Ace is the person who's maybe had the largest impact in this late game because LeBlanc in the late game with so much damage can threaten everyone. People flashing away from chains. People trying to ward him out and not succeeding so far. Apperman has been muted so much in this late game. This Mordecai's are struggling to find anyone Lord, to ult. Look at that damage tree from the center. Those rapid fire autos coming out every couple of seconds have been so, so high value. Sengoku once again find themselves a Baron. Let's see oh what happens. Oh my god, Apperman takes himself to about half HP. The Baron is very low. He NT? does have death on NT. Going in the background, trying to keep people away. That's Paz out though and Sengoku is trying to turn, but they can't find it. Apperman taken to almost nothing and Enti will fall he can't survive and the rest of the time V3 are hunting down that's one auto two autos blank and it's blank trying to find the game but Archer's railgun secures another it will be the da the Emperor's divide buying time but Pyrian goes golden he's in trouble remember Archer is just a monstrosity at this point and Senna is here and she's hunting for hell this is your high noon Senna coming out Matt Mercer better be voting the voice lines for this one as pa Paz comes in. It is the two Nexus turrets. It's Mapperman alone against the world, against the Renekton, against Ace. And V3 will surely secure their way to the finals here. There's two minutes and a half on the next, on the inhibitor respawning. It's one turret remaining between V3 and the Nexus. They've got to have it. Surely they have it. Apperman goes golden and he flashes. It's not enough. And that is the ace. 4v3, they're onto the Nexus Turret and Nymera, they've done it. They will win 3-1, surely here. I think they have to, 70 seconds and a half, and Ryan is gonna oh. die because, of course, the backdoor bonus was not an act activated. No minions there, but no minions, no worries. V3, take it 3-1. to one. V3 three esports were the face place team in the split they went nine and oh they were so dominant they looked shaky towards the end of it but in this series in that last game in particular we saw some pretty spectacular league of legends but it was v3 that edged it out but we aren't done here quite yet we'll take a breather we'll take some notes we'll take you to the analyst desk in a moment or two
Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL officially on official coverage of the LJL 2020 Summer Split Round 2, match number 1, game number 4, series over. It was a 3-1. One of us was correct with the prediction of the, the clock and the scoreboard, but it, uh, huh. None of us were... The colours are wrong there. Yeah, that's, that's a wrong bit wrong way round. Wrong. It's going to be red, not green. We're going to be stopping, not going. But V3 <laughs> went through everything, found the solution. And while me and Initialize were victorious in our prediction, we were miles wrong with how we expected the set to go. All of us, arguably, were very incorrect with how we expected the series to go. Go check out our full thoughts on our podcast as we go for a good Plus 30 three. minutes about it. Gentlemen, V3 Esports were behind most of this game. Almost all of this game. Sengoku had the gold lead. They had the kill lead. And yet, V3 fought valiantly. They fought hard. They had over 100 CS. There were Flame Horizons on Sengoku's side. But that be damned if you are V3. And be damned if you're a V3 fan and supporter. Commiserations, though. To Sengoku, I think I've gone on for long enough here, hyping up, really emphasizing the teams and everything. But gentlemen, how did this unfold? This longest game of summer split. Second longest game God. in LGL history in 2020. Like, go I'll for it, take, sorry. I'll take the early game and I'll throw it to my Mary later because I know he's got some very specific thoughts. Sounds on beautiful. Choices. But the early game was supposed to be V3's area to win. They had Renekton Nidalee, they mm. had the LeBlanc, mm. uh, they had the Bard Roams as well. You were supposed nice. to be trying to find these early picks and skirmishes, and they didn't really find all that much. Boogie wasn't landing spears early, uh, and the Mordekaiser that was kind of picked to break apart the dive potential top side kind of worked out mm. pretty well. Stengoff Gaming came out, I believe, to 3-0 and early on. They were getting yep. the early Drake early on. They... Uh, catch two, they catch Boogie and the Renekton out uh, behind the Dragon Pit when Paz tries to teleport back in, get a couple kills there as well. Yeah. It's all looking good for Sengoku Gaming. V3 are running into the Azir and it's all looking nightmarish. Then things start turning around. Take it away, Nightmare. Hey, okay, so it turns around when a couple of really key items come through. Uh, QSS and Mikhail's. Um, mm. We saw this come out from Karma in game one from um, from Ace in the mid lane. Comes out from Rhino on the Bard, uh, this time it's from the support role. What this means is that, once again, Sengoku are left with Ashult as their engage, and then also Mordekaiser being a real problem. They just couldn't deal with the Mordekaiser in that mid game. That's one of the reasons Sengoku got so far ahead. But when you can QSS Mordekaiser's ult, He's not tanky enough to face tank your whole team. And True. If, you tank, uh, if you QSS the Ash Arrow, it also means that Sengoku can't get this kind of mid-range fight where they can start wailing on you with the Ash and the Azir. Sengoku could never find a clean engage. And what that meant was that the range of Nidalee with the Spears and then also LeBlanc jumping forward with um, three Cloud Drakes, which means you have 30% ultimate cooldown reduction, which means not, uh, LeBlanc's ult is probably on like a 10 second cooldown in late game. Um, you just have the ability to poke out in a way that Sengoku could not deal with. And that meant that V3 could play the objective fights very slow. Slow enough that they could get so many rounds and rotations off mm. that Sengoku could, will have to look for the engage. They never found it and they just got poked off of objectives. I mean, I think some of the most important part came towards the mid to late game of it when that dragon dance kept happening over and over and over again. And then it came to both teams Dragon Soul Point is up, but Baron also is up, and we see two teams make the same, make very different decisions and trade over. One gets the soul, and one gets Baron. Initialize. Would you mind going a bit in depth for this part? I absolutely can. Oh, this is after you. Ace went hunting in the red side jungle, trying to find his way onto a flank. State of vision, mm. couldn't find it. Had to back. NT, meanwhile, has done the exact same on the other side of the jungle. He sees Ace blast Cone over the wall to deal with the top wave. He's off vision, wraps around into Raptor Pit and gets onto the 5, 1 and 11 Senna who has rapid fire cannon. Over 100 souls, I think, at that point. Is an, it was just chunking everybody out to no HP. She'd move from utility into true damage terror. And... NT gets the showstopper. He was at this point saying, "Okay, we couldn't find the engages. Too many QSSs. 
Uh, yeah. The ult wasn't working from Appmen. The Ash Arrow wasn't working because it was just getting cleansed away. So they were relying on Enti to find the Miracle Flank. They get it. They get Baron having got Archer. And you maybe think, well, if Sengoku Gaming got the chance to win it here. And that was the end of the good news. Yeah, and that was... Well, it wasn't. They were... Uh, um, uh, Sengoku were also able to, slightly later on, a, a few more skirmishes happen. Let's zoom on, though, because we'll go in full depth mm. if you are interested yeah. in our full thoughts over on mm. our podcast. Plug again. Um... Sengoku are able to win another big team fight, and because of that, they're able to get the Baron and that Elder Drake and Nymera. I thought the game was over at that point, personally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We all did. No, and Sengoku, so they've managed to find that pick onto Archer, as you were saying, with, mm. with the NT flank, and that reminded that, I have to say, Tussle was very much trying to do that versus CJ in game four against, their, um, yes. game in, against CJ, actually. Very similar vibes. Because Set does have this late game engaged potential from a flank, which very few champions have the same way of doing because you just come from behind a team and just shunt someone into your team. Sen Sengok can find it so hard to find engages. We've talked about that through the itemization, the late game. You can force fights around objectives, though, because if they come okay. to you, you don't necessarily need to find that engage. Sengoku did that around Baron a couple of times. Um, of course, they did that well a few times, and then at the end of the game, well, it went really, really poorly for them. But that's what they were reduced to. So as long as V3 knew that was on the cards, they could prepare accordingly, and uh, won them that game four in the series. It did actually get them there. Phenomenal play. It's it's crazy to see a Senna actually get to minute 50, because that's when she turns into an absolute machine gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 30 odd souls. Yeah, it's like, well, okay, yes, yeah, so your range is longer than everyone, even more, more a lot of champions ultimates at this point now, which is... It's like, are you outranging like Tristana level 18 fire cannon? If so, what the heck is going on with the design team? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, well, and they look at the design team turn around to you and go, the team was allowed to get to 50 minutes. That's what the champion yeah. does at that point. If you if you get there, we gave them a win button. Maybe, maybe you should have like, you know the Corky when he has uh, the special delivery, he has the package and like that siren mm. goes off. Can you just have that whenever siren <laughs> stalls? Whenever you get like a, a stall increase from Senna. Oh, wow. Senna just popping off two ways till Sunday. Archer showing that his champion pool is just as Alive wide well. as we were expecting. There's a lot of things we're, go we're going to be expecting moving forward. But to give a quick recap, 3-1 in favor of V3 moving into that grand finals. But that's not the end of Sengoku for us. As tomorrow, bright and early, we'll be covering live Crest Gaming Act facing off against Detonation Focus Me. And the winner of that match will be facing off against Sengoku. So there's still a chance we could get a repeat mm. of Sengoku or Crest Gaming Act or Destination Focus Me could be hungry for that podium spot themselves. Minimum place they're going to be fighting for is going to be third place if they do face Sengoku. But uh, gentlemen, if I must and if I may, pick your brains very briefly about this. Sure thing. Who do you expect to uh, maybe give Sengoku a more challenging matchup? Not who's going to win out of their series. We've got that for tomorrow. Who do we think will give uh, the best game for Sengoku? They're very different teams, so uh, that's why I'm so asking that. I do, I do think that CJ maybe has a better matchup into Sengoku. Okay. Based off mm -hmm. the, because I think that DFM... I think I, so. I think the FM are going to win tomorrow. I think I'll be straight up about that. Okay. I do think that. I think that CJ looked very shaky on the whole thing, but I think CJ being able to take a game state and just go tear up the paper and just do something random can really throw Sengoku's um, mental right. Because yeah. They, oh yeah. They love to be prepared. You can see like they they, they did play this game very slow. This last one was, um, and a lot of this series they love to be very regimented in these kind of things. CJ doesn't really let you do that. I do think that DFM will be the team to face them, though, so we might get a very close matchup. Yeah, it's also one of those things where I kind of agree. I think CJ do have that option. Mm. That said, DFM play side lane skirmishes pretty well in the early game. They get good advantages their early game. It's the mid games where we have more question. Mm. It could be a problem against Zengoku Gaming. You do play those mid game team fights pretty well, but we kind of see Nappaman and Yutoro Miyashi get a little bit caught out in those side lanes a little bit today. True. And there's a world where Ebi and uh, you know, Utapon and Gang have been playing pretty well in lane at the minute. Could see that be a punishing option as well. So while I agree CGA have that ability to do weird stuff, not like DFM don't have options. We will find out which of those two teams will be facing off tomorrow, bright and early, 10 a.m. 
British Standard Time. Gentlemen, that's our series. We already have our finalists, V3 Esports, Ace, Boogie, Paz, Archer, and Reiner. That whole squad is together. Boogie's just left the on interview for some reason. I'm a very confused on what's going on on my other Poor monitor. Um, oh, oh, they're getting they're not getting um, Archer on now. They're just switching over. Yes, yeah. I oh, is, is it Archer? Oh no, it's Ace. Oh, it's my Ace. apologies. They both have dyed hair, so I just saw it. I was like, oh, ah. it's one of the two of them. It's a 50-50. I, I called it wrong. Gentlemen, <laughs> to end out the stream, any closing thoughts from either of you through this uh wild series lots to, that we saw yeah. lane swaps everything else yeah so i, I think um so i saw obviously the playoffs uh yesterday between like so the na playoffs and the, the eu playoffs mm -hmm. like Christ versus cloud and all the other stuff um and honestly i was pretty afraid given that these teams are teams which are very likely to be in play-ins um i look at like shalco and i'm like oh wow that's kind of scary I look at maybe Flycrest and Cloud9, I'm like, okay, if they come in as third, it's also pretty scary. But then seeing today how V3 have pulled off a lane swap where SK wouldn't, and seeing how both of these teams managed to problem solve on the fly very effectively when the sure. game does go a bit pear-shaped, mm -hmm. I'm feeling pretty okay about the LJL again. Okay. Uh, I think it is those decision-making moments where we're saying, okay, you are playing to your win conditions. You know, the top lane focus, the bot lane focus for both Zengok and V3. The the late game decision making is like, okay, we're in a different position around these dragons. How do we try and problem solve our way out of it? And I, I agree, it is those kind of fundamental decision making uh, strengths that we're seeing. Out of, honestly, both squads to an extent that give me some hope against some of these better teams in, from around the world. And with that all said. We've given you our thoughts. Check out our podcast, which will be out next week, recapping and giving our hopes and expectations for round three and that final. But for myself, Initialize and Nymera, thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back very, very soon. Goodbye.